Hi guys, uh, hope you're all okay and everybody's keeping well. Uh, this is just a qu uh, another quick one. I've just st uh, started doing a video on that piggyback sheath. I've just designed this and done this. Got to have a little bit of tooling. I'll probably do a video on this as well today. I hope. And but uh, be music with this one, and I'll do a run through of me making it. Um, what I wanted to do with this one is um, it's another one that's got to be done that I'm working on. Um, He's got through about designing how I design my sheath and the process I got to get where I need to be for my template. Now I have a lot of different templates that I keep but you know this is a new one it's not one I've done before so um, I'll, uh, as always we knew I'll start afresh and um, he wants uh, what, 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 what I call my western type sheath. Um, um, being opposite to a, a Scandinavian type sheath, I just named it that. This one will have a little bit of the tooling that I'm known for, I told you, just a little bit of that stippling on the top, which I'll try and show you. Um, right, so uh, you get yourself a piece of paper, this is a big piece of graph paper because I want the extra for the belt loop on this. A normal piece of paper wouldn't be enough for this. You'd be able to do the sheath, but you wouldn't be able to accommodate for the belt loop too. So what you want to do is get yourself a piece of paper. I'll transfer this to card after this just to see how it holds up because card acts a lot like um, leather does as in thickness, the way it bends, that, um, that type of stuff. Um, so, um, because if you was to use, you'll find if you do it with paper, like I'm doing here now, but I, I've learned now over the years to accommodate for the, and I'll try and show you this process on the paper. If you just did this on paper, folded the paper around, when you, if you've done that on leather, you, you'll come up short. It, it will be too too short here. Um, but if you do it with the cardboard, it will be there or thereabouts. It will be, you know, because this acts a lot like leather does. It's kind of thick like leather. It's, you know, it's the closest thing you're going to get to, really. Um, the thin cards, once you've got your template all sorted, you can get rid of this, put it on a nice piece of card or a bit of thin plastic. Um, I haven't got it with me now to show you what I mean, and then keep it as a, if you're making the same thing over, I'd recommend doing that kind of a template. Anyway, here we go. So get your knife, put it on your, put the spine on the um, edge of the paper. Make sure you leave enough room at the end, because that's where your welt's going to come round. I hope you can see all this. I'll have to try and um, do, do a different camera angle, but it's hard here. If, um, and the Gorilla Pod that I bought, it's not really... I, need, I needed the bigger one up for this, really. To, anyway, so you put it on your paper. So I can zoom you in a bit. I can't show you the end. I might be able to. Ah! Right, we'll put it on the paper. Put it on the paper, leave enough at the end for the welt for it to come round. Put the edge of the knife on the edge of the paper, on the edge, so that it's just in line with it. And what we're going to do is we're going to roll that knife out very gently and we'll have it like that. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to, depending on how you want it, you could keep it straight. I always like to rock mine in just a tad. It's how I like it to sit inside. Then we're going to get a pencil or pen. I prefer a pencil for this type of stuff because sometimes you have to rub stuff out. We'll go all around the knife. It's not needed, but I always do. You could just go around the, the front of the knife, th this side. Right, so we have then the, the little drawing on there of, of, of the knife. Um, right, so. Rule of thumb for me, like I say, is always a two finger. Um, I, I want the end of that knife sticking out two fingers, or just under, one and a little bit. Um, you don't want it sticking out that much at the top. It's not needed, it's too much. It's less secure. All you need is enough for your thumb, forefinger, this, just to be able to just uh, retrieve it out the sheath. So, we'll look at that. So, roughly, I know then, Make a little mark. This is hard for me because I'm doing it all upside down. Um, right, that's roughly where I'd, I'd need to be. I'm just going to have to turn this around a little bit, guys. Um, okay, so we're here. 
no, at the top of the sheath there. So that's where we went for the two fingers, or just under. All two fingers is fine. Um, I like to go just under. What we need now is we need to think about how we want that top of that sheath to be. Um, now you can just draw a line on. I tend to use a lot of different stuff for this, um, a protractor, um, you can use a compass for doing it. Um, I've got a lot of these little things like this with different angles on. Um, I use them a lot. I use there's a ruler like this, a bendy ruler, that, that I use a lot. Um, there's a lot of different ways of doing it. I like these French curves. I, I've got all different ones. I had one um, made up in stainless steel, um, which I use a lot. Very handy tool. Um, I have lots of different shapes, sizes, angles. Um, for this, uh, just have to zoom you back out a minute. Um, so what we're going to do now is look at the top of this sheath. Now I've got little marks on this because I use this quite a bit, this particular one, and this will give me the angle that I'm looking for. Um, so I'll put, I, I always put a little, a couple of little marks on this contour of this particular. Um, doing now is. Okay, that's going to give me my, how I want that, that nice curve for that top of that sheath to be. Right, so now we're going to be thinking about the welt. Now, the welt is going to be coming inside. There's the edge of the knife. I'll just come just off the edge. I always make a line like that, hope you can see this, so that transfers then from there to that edge, so um, that gap's got to be in there. Um, so now we'll look at the size of the welt. Now, this all depends on what you want, you know, I'll, I'll get a bit washed now with explaining this type of stuff, because it depends how thick you want it and stuff, you know, I don't want you to think what, you know, what I'll tell you welt wise is, is gospel and that's the size you've got to use, because it, it, it depends on each different sheath, you know, if somebody wants something really compact. Right, I'll tell you this, I wouldn't want to go no more than, I wouldn't want to welt any more, the, the least I'd go is probably 6mm, 7mm, I wouldn't make the, I, I don't care how compact he wants it, I wouldn't make that welt any less than 7mm, and I wouldn't want the welt to be no bigger than 15 really, um, that, that, that's the parameters f if, if that helps. Um, I tend to use about 12, 13 centimetres, roughly um, for my American brothers, um, that would be in inches, half inch is about right really, which is Yeah, about 12 mil. Right. So, so what we're going to do now is we've got to think about the, at, how I want this to look. The um, the shape of this now. So, let's come out just a little bit more. Um, I'll make a lot of sheaths like this, so this is quite simple for me to do. Um, this curve that I'm giving here, it depends on the size of the knife to how how much I, I'll, excuse me, I'll use that. What I'll tend to do as well is I'll go a little bit bigger than what I need to on this paper, put it onto the cardboard and then trim the cardboard down a little bit more just to get it just that per, just to get it perfect. But this will give you a rough idea of what you need to be doing, I hope. Okay, so what we want now is we want to be coming down, 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 leaving that half inch. I mean, you can mark out from the edge here. I'm just so used to doing it. Um, what I'd suggest you doing is maybe get your ruler and just keep marking. See, mine are already there on that point. It's just because I'm so used to doing it. But you can mark, keep marking. You know, your half an inch, half an inch, half an inch, like, like that, and um, do it that way. Okay, doesn't always have to be completely un uniform all around. I mean, down the bottom you can bring it just a little bit thinner. 
Okay. I'm happy with that. A lot of people come to a point here. Um, a lot of people come to a point there. I, I, I've always done mine a little bit more upswept. It's another trait of mine that people recognise in my sheaths. Um, it's just a little bit different to most. It doesn't come right to a point. It comes round and then comes back up a little bit. It's something I've always done. Right, what we need to be thinking about now is your belt loop. I always use this ruler. Or this one. This is a little bit thicker but I've always tend to use this which is... Thirty two centimeters. Not sure what that is in inches, but thirty two centimeters. It's probably one and a quarter, I think, inches. We'll go to the center of the sheath. We'll draw. We'll draw a line up, and we'll draw a line up. That's where we want our belt loop to be. Then what we'll do is we'll connect the top of the, the sheath up to this loop and then we'll connect that up. I'll show you once I've drawn it. This will give you your, your belt loop nice and centred. Okay, what we've done then is we've connected those two and when you come to fold that over then that should run down um, to about here if you want it. I always use uh, a couple of templates and I always tend to go for a two inch belt rather than for the one inch with the size of the belt loop on the back because then it gives them the options of wearing both belts if needed. Um, whereas if you did it for one and a half and he decides to put a two inch belt on he, he's going to get a bit stuck so I always tend to use that as a rule of thumb for the you don't need it any bigger than that most people don't tend to use um, if they are using the three inch belt and stuff maybe I'd advise maybe to um, go for a dangler maybe or because there'd be too much gap then in the in the loop at the back when the sheath will keep riding up when they come to de deploy the knife um, right, so what we'll do now is, because we'll have two pieces of paper here, we'll cut this all out as one and then we'll just chop that off and then we'll end up with a belt loop at the back. So, uh, there's lots of different ways of doing this, scissors or, um, I'd probably advise, if you're new to this type of stuff, maybe to use um, scissors. Because I'm so used to cutting stuff out all the time with... Um, knives and you know my round knife and stuff like that I always tend to just use my um, scalpel it's also good practice then when you're cutting on the leather as well if you cut stuff out like this all the time rather than using scissors because you don't really cut the leather that much out with scissors I mean you can do if you buy the right scissors but uh, it's hard work. Right, so what we'll do now is we'll these type of bits. I'm okay doing it, but these type of bits. Sorry, I'm okay cutting straight lines with these bits. But you could always use a ruler for these bits just to make it that little bit neater. Um, so what we've got now is that's what you'll have perfectly symmetrical and um, everything will be you know perfect either side what we'll need to do now is we'll need to cut this little section off because we don't need two belt loops at the front one at the front we only need the one at the back a little help with the when you come to put your templates down on the leather Because if you've just started out, I bet you've done this. I did it a lot. Um, when you come to put your te template down on the leather, depending on which side the leather you put it on. Um, if you want a right-handed sheath, make sure the belts, belt uh, loops on the right-hand side. And if you want a left-handed sheath, make sure it's on the, the left-hand side. I hope that makes sense. If you put this down like that onto the flesh side of the leather, 
you know, you, 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 you'll see what I mean, you'll, you'll be able to work, you know, if you're always wondering which side do I do it or I've done it where I've put it down, rushing, forgot, cut it out and it was, it's ended up as a left hand sheath rather than a right and I've had to start again. Um, I've done that a, a quite a few times so don't think you're on your own. Um, and then I figured out about that with the, just because it done my head in that much I ended up figuring out that way of doing it and now, you know, you if you always remember that you'll always get it on whatever right or left sided handy chief that you'll need. Um, right guys, so there we there we are. I mean it's look gonna look quite big on the paper and you're gonna think blimey um you know that's a bit big. But when you come to put it out onto the leather you 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 this will shrink quite a lot in in the leather. Um, also, like I've said, transfer this then onto your cardboard, cut that out of your cardboard, then have another look and then trim your cardboard. And then put your cardboard onto your leather and it'll be bang on. Um, trim your belt loop. All you need to do now is trim your belt loop down to size. I'll do that with the cardboard. Um, there's way more than I need there. You, you, you could roughly use this to... Um, you know, maybe... I'll go much more than I need here, just so that I'm just not wasting the leather. Um, that'll be about perfect, but I'll probably leave a little bit more than that. Um, and then you'll have enough room to do your stitches and enough room for your for your two inch belt. Or one inch, if it's for yourself and you only use a one inch, one and a half inch belt, make that, make that belt loop for one and a half inches. It'll help an awful lot when you come to deploy the knife. Because um, then you won't have um, the gap in the back with the sheath riding up and down all the time. Um, hope that helps with designing your template. Take care. Bye for now. Lee.